hi everybody as you know i just got this out of the kill and i actually i tried it out as i was unloading the kiln and discovered that this note had a problem so i wanted to show you because i'm sure that this that this is something that some of you have run across uh if you're making whistles and flutes and things um, and you don't want to throw it away because you did such a good job on it or one of the kids did such a good job on it. And, and um, But there is very often, I mean, almost 99% of the time, I could get, if the kid had a flute that worked before it went into the kill and then it comes out kind of raspy, then like it did in that other video then there is something that you can do to before you trash it so don't get rid of it see if you can fix it and i'm going to show you how i do it i have some little tiny these are probably called i don't know jewelers files or something i've got a little set of files let me see how close i can get here there's one that's kind of squarish. This one's flat, but it's shaped like a knife. That one is flat. This one is a square one. And these have texture on both sides so that you can file using both sides. There's another. There's a round one. They're also kind of magnetized. And then here's one that's triangular shape. So uh, whatever shape you need, just about, you've got it right there. So I fiddled around with the flute, playing it, blowing through the, uh, the sound hole right here, and trying to determine, <clears throat> I was getting clear sound on all three of these, which tells me that it wasn't necessarily this hole that was the problem so i figured by process of elimination that it had to be this one this one right here so i'm going to get this very maybe, maybe i should set it down i'm going to get the camera real close and so you can see what i did take a real good look at that now if you will notice where this used to be just a flat little ring around this hole i have built it up on one side it is kind of like having a little eyelid and i'm going to move it back kind of like having a little eyelid on that hole now how did i figure out that that's what it needed by wiggling my finger on the over the where the air was coming out i could tell that i got a better sound if i blocked the air on one side of the hole rather than the whole hole <laughs> the whole thing i know that gets really complicated but so i'll show you how i did my how i did that so as I was blowing through it, I rocked my finger, let's see, I, I rocked my finger back and forth on this little hole over here and then and discovered that if I partially closed it from this side, I got a clear note out of this one. Okay, so what am I going to do to partially close it? Um... I had already taken the round file and put it down in the hole to take off any burrs. When you're using um, stoneware, sometimes you might get one little grain of sand that pops out in that thing uh, in the process of the bisque fire. And it that could be all it takes to give you a raspy sound. I also took this little square, squared off file and I and I wanted to clean off the 
the little ledge inside here. So I cleaned that off and if I ran into something I smoothed it off. Just like that. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and usually if it's a little grain of sand or something it breaks right off so you don't have to really grind on it too much. So this now has a really clear sound as I will demonstrate. <laughs> I don't know how to play a flute. Okay, here we go. So take some rubbing alcohol, just regular old bottle of rubbing alcohol. Let's put some on this cotton ball. I'm gonna use a little cotton ball. And then just take the, take the piece. You can do this all over it, but don't get around that little area. So you're just gonna wipe off and this just kind of cuts the grease, so to speak. So if somebody had hand lotion on or even just their natural skin has a little bit of oil in it, you can sort of dab, especially on the little finger holes. There, okay, so now this will help it to take the glaze without creating some kind of resist. Especially, I, I haven't noticed it around the fingering holes as much as I have around the mouthpiece. And so you really want to get that really well. Okay, and then it's ready to glaze because that'll just pretty much dry instantly. I'm, I'm just going to use, uh, this is... Oh, get your back on here. This is Wax Resist. This happens to be Amico, and it says Wax Resist. This is a latex stuff, and it's kind of liquidy, and you can put it on with a brush. And so I recommend that, especially for younger students, because um, the hot wax is a little too dangerous to have in a classroom unless you are going to be right next to it all the time. And I mean, you cannot turn your back on it because you got little kids that'll do silly things. Okay, so I'm gonna try this. I wish I had a little tiny brush. Uh, let's just, let's see here. Well, how about I, I use this one? I use this brush. This isn't very, this one isn't very big, but it'll kind of come to a point there once I get some stuff on it. So there's, there's what it does when you have it kind of blobs up on the end. So you're going to very carefully, you don't have to try to fill the hole. You just want to put it around there and you want to put some around here. You're going to be very careful when you glaze this area because, and, and this comes off with water. So if you just make a huge mistake or if one of your kids just goes nuts with it. Uh, now look, I created a little bubble in the end of that and that is good because it will totally block that. Okay, so I didn't quite see. You want to keep that sharp edge right on the end of there. Okay, so let's get the other. So we got that one. Let's get this one. See, I blocked that one too with a little bubble. It may burst as it dries, but if it doesn't, it's all the better. 
<clears throat> okay, did the same thing there. Now, I wonder if I can get lucky and do that on this one. My brush is a little too big, but you know what? I think I can use that little teeny weeny one. I have a just I have a smaller brush here that this might work for. And get those little hairs to stick together. And I got it partially closed there. Beautiful. I just got that one closed up too. This one I think is a little too big to form a bubble in, so I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. You're ready to go now as soon as you uh, glaze it, put it in the kiln, and don't touch it until you get it back out. This, since you're going to probably glaze all, all over the whole bottom, unless you have a bead rack set up already, and this is pretty heavy to put on a bead rack, so I don't think I would advise that. I would put it on a tiny, tiny uh, wire stilt and put, and set it on, this would be considered the bottom, I would just set it right on there and then when you get it out you can sort of uh, sand off the little nubbies if there are any. Well, I'm going to use purple. I'm going to use Mako Glaze, and the reason I'm going to use this, I mean, this is a deliberate choice. Mako doesn't run, and it's really good for students because you don't have to worry about getting your kiln shelves messed up or having any issues as long as they don't have more than three coats of, of glaze on anything. So, but you don't have to. Some glazes are really, really runny and some are not. This is just one of those that is not. <clears throat> so I like it for things like this because we don't have to worry about it. Little area right here. Unglazed. So I'm just gonna go around the rim of that course we're gonna this is kind of a transparent color so we're gonna need to do more than one coat on it let's, let's see there now you can get real neat about that when you I actually prefer so these are staying clogged up except for that one so I'm just gonna go to town on it here Now, if you get some down in there like I just did, it's a little more than I'm comfortable with. You can just take a, a needle tool and just go around that. Okay, well, I just wanted to share that with you because a lot of times people are disappointed if their flute isn't exactly tuned. So, now it is. Okay, so I will see you the next video. Thanks for watching.
Take care. Bye-bye now.